What's up guys, today on our uh, Intensity with Intent series, I'm going to talk about the approach to the offseason that I'm taking with Chris Stuffin and Brandon Sen of Kabuki Strength. So first of all, I'm really, really lucky that I get the chance to work with these guys. Chris and I have really similar philosophies and mentalities towards a lot of training things, and Brandon does Chris's training, so I think that I'm in a, a very good position to learn from these guys and to improve with their help. Now, I can't give too many specifics away because it is Brandon's training program and I need to respect that. Uh, obviously, obviously, you guys can go sign up with Kabuki Strength if you if you want that uh, inside information. But in the meantime, I do want to share our overall approach to the block, explain how it fits with my personal philosophy and with my goals. So, first of all, this is going to be a long off season. We're planning about 36 weeks all the way until the 2019 U.S. Open. I really need that time to heal up. I'm so sick of injury, uh, so burnt out from, from various meets. So we have a lot of time to improve, to work on weaknesses. And that's really the focus of this first mesocycle within our 36-week macro cycle. So we're breaking the 36-week up macro cycle into three different mesocycles. Each mesocycle is focusing on different things. So this first one is a very general one. It's focusing on weaknesses and it's using non-competition movements both to give myself a break from the drudgery, not drudgery is not the right word, a break from the repetitiveness of the uh, com competition movements that can often lead to injury. You know, if you're trying the same thing really hard over and over and over again, that's, that's one factor that might contribute. So you saw on bench we used the duffalo bar, I'm doing safety bar squats, deficit deadlifts, things that I know that have worked for me in the past to improve my competition lifts, but they're different enough that I, I can stay fresh and that I can make some progress. So I'm really, really excited about that. So that's the overall philosophy. I think within each training day, this is where the intensity with intent really comes in because if you guys know me, you know that my thing is kind of pushing balls to the wall all the time. And again, First of all, very easy to burn out training that way, very easy to get injured training that way, and it's just not a good strategy at my level. I do think it's appropriate sometimes. I think if you're a beginner especially, learning to push balls to the wall, learning to grind on your lifts is a very, very valuable skill that I see a lot of even you know fairly intermediate advanced level lifters haven't developed because they've been so focused on technique or so focused on you know hitting the perfect RPE or whatever the case may be. But at my level, Balancing all those different things is very, very important. And so the big, big tool that, well, the tool that I'm most excited to use is the Velocity Tracker. So we're using Open Barbell's Velocity Tracker to measure the speed of all my reps, kind of determine, and from, determine how hard I'm pushing, how much I have left in the tank without having to go balls to the wall all the time. At the same time, I can still push really hard because I can try to make each rep faster, each rep smoother, each rep cleaner. And unlike with RPE, which doesn't really fit my mentality, velocity is a much more quantitative measure of those things. It's not perfect, but it's pretty damn good. And so I'm really, really excited about getting the chance to, to play around with that. So we'll talk more about all those things in detail. I do want to give you guys a little bit of breakdown of the training stuff that I've gone through so far. So you saw earlier in the video, I hit the duffalo bench and I hit some upper body accessories. And this is my heavy deadlift day. So we warmed up with lower RPE, lower intensity good mornings because I think I really need to improve my hip engagement uh, in all my movements, but especially my squat and deadlift really enjoy that movement. It's not something I've trained really hard. It's something that Dan Green actually suggested that I start pounding a little bit more and so that was pretty cool and I think you can see it did lead to a much better hip position for me on these deficit deadlifts. This is not a crazy weight but remember first week back you know had that little adductor tweak at the quad tweak before that we we're just being really conservative. So this was my last one upset and you can see I actually I was pretty pumped that I got through that with zero pain. That was my first heavy lower body set with zero paint in a long time. A long fucking time. 
And you, so you can see, I'm I'm debating going back to hook grip. So I know I said that mixed grip was the right way for me. I absolutely think, think absolutely think it's more secure grip for me. But Brandon does have some different ways that he would like me to try hook gripping the bar. And I've really found that the torquing of the mixed grip does seem to affect my pull a little bit. You can see on this one, if you watch really closely, it's pretty difficult for me to get my hips in the right position when I'm pulling with a mixed grip. So that's something Brandon and I are going to have to talk about in detail before I really decide, you know, what am I going to do when it comes time to competition. Again, one of the benefits of a long off-season is I have time to play around with these things. In the past, it's just been meat to meat to meat, and you're really kind of stuck, right? You can't get back to figuring out what works for you, making those small changes that I talked about in Unfuck Your Program. It's just not all that viable uh, when you're constantly competing. It's the same reason that I suggest that people don't max out all the time, you know, like two, maybe three times a year tops. Because you really need that time to figure out what works for you. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, I want to tell you guys right now, I don't have my heavy squat videos in this clip or in this YouTube video, this particular video. That's because I was doing a photo shoot with my guy Kyle, Kyle Wurzel, t uh today, which was my first heavy squat day. So it went really well. Super happy to not have any pain. But when you're doing a photo shoot, it's really difficult to do Instagram and YouTube videos at the same time. So uh, we'll have some psych, or psych up kind of hype up videos for that, and we did get a couple good clips that I should be able to share with y'all, but they're just not in this video. Pin squats, another exercise that I'm really excited about. I've talked about these before the tribute prep, but I think they're really valuable for me. There's something that really helped me be mindful of engaging my glutes out of the hole, which for me, you know, being a quad and back dominant lifter is pretty difficult. So if that is a problem for you, I suggest that you, you try these out. The... When I do them, I am trying to deload just for a split second on the pins. I, you know, that's, that's really up to you whether you want to do them that way or not. But I find that that split second deload forces me to get even tighter as I drive out of the hole. The trick to these is making sure that your torso angle does not change. It's so, so easy to do a good morning instead of a pin squat. Or, a, you know, suspend a good morning instead of a pin squat because you're in a good position to, to get leverage with your lower back that way, and the weight is usually fairly light. But if you do that, it's really not going to carry over your squat as well, in my opinion. These are some other good accessory exercises that I want to share. Now, these were supposed to be Romanian deadlifts, but as you can see, for me, they're more of a stiff-legged deadlift because, again, I do have trouble activating my hips, and Brandon and I are going to have to discuss, hey, do we want to stick with the stiff-legged variety? for better hamstring engagement, or do we want to, you know, really lighten the weight up and try and get those RDLs to, to work? Now, don't pay attention to this first, the first stroke, because when you're standing up on RDLs, you really don't want, um, oh, actually, this might be my second set, I can't tell. Um, I think this is my second set, because you can see the hip engagement, real, real low. That's almost all lower back and hamstrings, which is more how I perform my stifogi deadlift. And if you watch the uh, bar path, it's it's not perfectly straight, right? It's coming back at the top. So I got these sets out of order. This was my second set. But that's really what you are looking for in a step like deadlift. This is a good step like a deadlift. And this is 405 for 10. You know, nothing super crazy, but um, pretty good work. Now this is the first set I did first. This is supposed to be more of an RDL. Again, ignore this first set, first rep, but watch. See how I'm more hip engagement, not going all the way down, still trying to get that stretch in the hamstring, but it's really the glutes you can see that are trying to be the primary mover in this exercise. I'm not really squeezing the glutes to the top because I do want to keep that tension in my hips. It really, really helps me uh, to get that kinesthetic awareness of how to initiate the movement. The thing is, these really aren't perfect. I need to be getting my hips Quadruped rows, incredible ab exercise here for the back too. Extraordinarily difficult because they force you to engage the lower abs and glutes throughout the entire movement. Now, this is a great movement for me going back to the hip thing because engaging those lower abs and glutes are going to help me to engage my hips. So that wraps up the training recap. 
again, intensity with intent. We're going to be grinding that all month, trying to explain to you guys why it's so important to me and why I think it can be really useful. And I hope you can see how it fed into all these different exercise selections and into our overall programming choices.